what would you say is the purpose and the intention for doing what you do? The foundational intention that I have is to help everyone, myself included, to be able to rest very deeply into stillness in the middle of life. If we imagine our energy system as having a center pole that goes from the top of our heads all the way down to our perineum, and inside of that center pole is stillness, is emptiness. From that stillness, if we can then enter life, we enter life with freedom. We can enter life with, with joy. When our access to that central meridian, that central channel is obscured or um, when we're stuck in, a, in the reactivity of our minds or in some kind of emotional storm, our, our freedom is going to be limited. We're going to really see the world from inside of the storm or inside of the reactivity. So my goal with everyone and with myself, my primary client in a way is myself, <laughs> um, is to help myself and others live in an alignment with that central meridian, that life force that is beyond subject and object, and then to move from there into the dance of life with freedom, with joy, with the natural curiosity and exploration that every child is born with. If we look at a child that is uninjured, the child is just a bubble spring of curiosity and joy. You know, and if we can unwind the impressions that may have blocked ourselves from our life experiences to get back there, then we have access to that again. When you talk about stillness, access in that center, that place, what comes to me is trust, to be able to be still and calm in the midst of the storm. It comes to me as trust, but then I, I think, who am I trusting, really? <laughs> who is that? <laughs> right. <laughs> right? So um, for me, trust is in that central channel, is in that alignment with life itself, which is flowing through each of us. That's the deepest level, but there's a development to get there. So if we look at the psychological development of the child, you know, we could say, so the soul comes in and the soul is pure awareness. At least that's how I see the soul. And that pure agendaless beingness comes down and gets conditioned into the particular time that it is going to be incarnated into. And those layers, which start with the genetics of the mother and father, but then it's also the experiences that that awareness has in the womb of the mother, the conditions that the awareness is going to be born into, which include the socioeconomic conditions of the family, the, um, the love or lack of love between the mother and father, the quality of holding around the family and the child that is coming in, all of that makes an impression and starts to form an identity, an, an identity that will be either relatively free and connected to source or fixated and obscured in, from that connection in some way. So when we talk about trust, if we talk about basic trust, basic trust, you know, there's a, uh, something that a a developmental psychologist said, which is so beautiful to me, a child discovers him or herself in his or her mother's eyes. And if when the mother looks at the child, she's looking from her own center, from that place of love and openness, from a genderless presence that is connected, then the child knows him or herself as that. And then can develop what we call a secure attachment. And, and that secure attachment then gets radiated out throughout that child's history and throughout the time that awareness spends in time. Because awareness is nonlinear. Awareness is timeless. When that timeless awareness enters time, it needs 
a form. It needs a an ego, frankly. And that, that ego can be like a really beautiful set of clothing that you put on and you feel just totally comfortable in. You just can dance in it and you and you want to go out and show your friends, you know, that you just you just love being in that set of clothes. Or it could be really tight and uncomfortable and uh, you can't breathe in it and and just be filled with all the sequelae of trauma. And so when that happens, then it's harder to trust. We have to engage on a healing journey of some sort, which is to reboot, to reestablish, to clear out the noise that has accumulated inside of the energetic and emotional, but also the belief systems and the body, the body itself of that person. And when we engage in that healing journey, you know, we can't do it alone. If we want to heal those injuries, we have to go back into a relational space because that's where the injuries happened. And so then the question is, how do we reestablish trust and unwind so that that central meridian comes back online all the way through? But sometimes it's open, you know, in one place in the body-mind, but it's closed in another. That's usually how it is. It's, or, or it's, um, you know, someone might have a lot of flow in their, uh, in their mind. You know, they can think really clearly, but you can't feel them. You know, it's, or, you know, someone might be very sexually charged, and, you know, but, but they're not very smart about the partners that they choose. And if we're going to really develop as a whole being, we have to get that central channel to flow through all of our centers.